Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Wayne from Outback Touring Australia. We'll be running through some of the pros and the cons of canopy versus camper trailers and why we chose our own setups. All right, Wayne, why don't you introduce yourself? G'day guys, how you going? It's Wayne from Outback Touring Australia here today. All right, today we have something very special for you. We're bringing you a canopy versus camper trailer comparison, showing the pros and cons of each setup and what one would work best for you in each given situation. Today, I brought along my Ford Fold camper trailer. I'm gonna take you through the setup and explain to you why I chose this particular setup and the benefits and drawbacks of it. Now that I have a family, it seems logical that I have a camper trailer. It allows me to get the whole family out. I have small children and it makes it a lot easier trying to deal with the routine of small children and the day-to-day -day chores that you just can't escape when you have those guys. Um, now, it's, it's definitely hard, but it is a lot easier with a camper trailer as opposed to camping with a swag or a rooftop tent. I'm not saying it's not impossible, but it is definitely a lot easier and you have a lot more creature comforts so mum has a better time and therefore everyone has a better time so in doing so it creates a whole heap of benefits and drawbacks of camping with the camper trailer today I'll go through all of these and hopefully it'll help you guys make your decision on whether having a camper trailer will be benefit beneficial for you or not okay the first thing is you have a lot of creature comforts with you this allows you to have your kids out with you and it makes it a lot easier because you have everything packed in there and all you need to do is hook her up and take off. It also has a nice comfortable bed which is already made up so once you pop that top it's already set up and ready to go, no dramas. All right. So it also has a great kitchen which has gas and running water which in itself is brilliant because it keeps all your cooking and your kitchen in a neat and tidy condition. So if you like your camp cooking, you can make some beautiful meals and not have to worry about cleaning up the mess because you have a great kitchen there that you can work with and it's easy to clean everything up. In addition to having my 60 litre angle, I've also got a 60 litre fridge in the camper trailer. So that allows you to have a great amount of food and beer with you so you can go camping for greater periods of time. While we're on the subject, Another great benefit is long-term camping. You can get away and do some very long-term camping with the camper trailer because you have your creature comforts and you have your stocking abilities that you just can't have with a normal camp setup such as a swag or a rooftop tent. A great amount of benefits to having a camper trailer when you want to do long-term camping. So not only do you have a great food supply you also have the capacity to store a whole heap more water. This thing can carry 150 litres of water. So in addition to the 60 litres that I have in my vehicle, that's 210 litres that can take you camping safe and sound for quite a fair time. So another great benefit is the space in a camper trailer. With kids, you need room for them to play, particularly when it's raining. You need somewhere for them to occupy themselves. In a camper trailer, you have a little saloon plus your annex area, which is great to keep them occupied during the wet times. And while we're talking of extra room and entertainment for children, you know you can keep these guys occupied while you're setting up camp, while you're cooking dinner. It has a DVD player, which 
I don't often use, but it is a distraction for them if you need to do something and you can't constantly keep an eye on them. So there are definitely great benefits of having a camper trailer when you have kids. So lastly, is the fact that you can set up your camp and you can still go out exploring. I've had rooftop tents and it's a bit of a pain to be able to pack everything up and hit, head out and hit the tracks. With a camper trailer, you know, you can set up your camp and you can still go do all the fun things that you want to do while you're in the bush. Now that I've told you about all the great things about this camper trailer or camper trailers in general, let's go through all the cons. And a lot of these would be deal breakers for a lot of people. A camper trailer is very heavy and you know you're towing it. There's no getting around that. So you can't do a lot of tight track work. Definitely can't go through the Simpson or anything like that unless you've got someone to constantly pull you out. They're a bulky item and they're just like a big anchor basically. I'm going to tell you more of the drawbacks but I'm getting thirsty. I told Paul that I was going to time myself and see how long it takes me to set up. So there's no further ado. I'll grab a beer and we'll get set up. Cheers, mate. I'm absolutely loving my setup at the moment. All right, let's go over some of the pros and cons. Right, so some of the pros and cons. Let's start off with the pros. I'm really happy that my canopy is always set up, ready to go. Anytime I want to go camping, just jump in the car, head straight down the river, throw a bit of food, a bit of beer, and I'm set to go. Um, I also don't have the fuel costs of towing a one and a half to two ton trailer around the country. Um, that's a lot easier for me. If I'm going to any sporting events or anywhere I want at all, um, I've always got a fridge with me. I've always, I can always charge any devices I want. I've got the, all the amenities of a house right here with me. I don't need to tow a trailer anywhere I go. Um, I don't have to worry about the security of locking up a trailer if I want to hit some tracks. Um, everything's with me, so I know everything is safe. There's also my rooftop tent. That's one of the biggest pros I've got. No matter where I go, I've got a bed anywhere. I don't need to carry a swag with me. I don't need the camper trailer. I don't need any the tent, nothing. I've got a bed anywhere I go. Always ready to set up in minutes. So that's been a big positive for me. All right, now some of my cons, and I've got some big cons with this setup. Um, quite a lot of it though could have been prevented if I'd bought the car from new and started from scratch. But I bought the car from family members. Um, it already had a steel canopy on it. So there was a lot of my weight straight up. So there's my first problem. So I've done the best I can with what I've got. Um, it's still been a great canopy, nice and strong. And it's, I like that it can support the rooftop tent. Whereas if I had an alloy one, it would need a lot more reinforcement to support a rooftop tent on top. So I've got no hassles there, but it is very heavy. Um, if I'd started from scratch, I would have made it a removable canopy. I would have had the legs. I could have lifted it up, hit the tracks whenever I wanted. Um, that's one of my biggest cons as well. If I want to hit some tracks and you know, I'm camping, um, I can't just unhook a camper trailer and take off. I'm stuck. I've got my rooftop tent up, everything set up off my canopy. Um, I've got to pack everything up, everything, and it's really annoying. Even if you just want to go into the town and grab some bread. Uh, you, once you're set up here, you're basically stuck. Whereas, at least with a camper trailer, you unhook your camper trailer, You've got your car to do whatever you want then, you're free. So that's a big negative for me. Another con is the fuel cost. Um, because I keep my car loaded 24-7, always ready to go, that means my car's always heavy. Um, whereas a camper trailer, you unhook it, you're not carrying the extra weight while it's stowed away at your house, um, and you just hook it up when you're ready to go. So you're saving fuel during the week and using it on the weekend, whereas I'm using that extra fuel all the time. So that's a big con as well. Another con with that weight is it's really affected my off-road ability. If I had the removable canopy, I would have no weight on the back end. Um, I would have no issues going off-road, but it's really affected my power, trying to go up sand hills or anything like that. Or if I'm on any sort of camber and it's a soft sand or mud, my back end just wants to kick out on me and it, it's not a pleasant feeling. So you want to keep your rear end as light as you can. So if you really want to go canopy, you'd really want a removable canopy. Right Righto, Wayne, let's have some fun with this. I've always wanted to see 
the difference between setting up a canopy versus a camper trailer. Let's time each other, see who's quicker at setting it up. Rightio mate, rules are, you've got to set it up on your own. Besides, if you've got an awning or something and it's windy and you want to strap it down, I know I'm going to need help strapping the awning down so I don't break my awning. But also, set it up at normal walking speeds if you were doing it just normally. I want a true comparison between the two. All right, I've got a timer here. I'll start it, I'll sit it down there, and then I'll check it when we're done. Ready, set, go. Pause that while I go on the other side and set the other side up. Radio, let's resume it. We're at 9 minutes 28 at the moment. Time doesn't stop till you're sitting on your chair drinking a beer. Probably could have allowed a couple extra seconds in, but we are at 11 minutes 39. Oh, that's a long way up. How'd you do, mate? Did you beat that? Nobody's like you. You are not normal at all, no. I feel like I want to. Let down my guard and just fall Cause someone was before you Let someone let me go This time I must know for sure Cause someone was before you Let someone let me go But I just need to be sure Some say love's not for the bitter ones Some say love will only bring you down Some say love can feel Seven seconds. So you had dummy by 20 minutes, mate. Well done. Don't worry, mate. I've had a lot of practice with this. We do it pretty much every weekend. Normally, I've got my partner helping set up those, so usually it's a lot quicker. So 
obvious excuse. It took me a little bit longer to do it on my own. Um, but let's have a look at each other's setups. Shall we run around? All right, I'll do a very quick run around for you. I've got my two 100 watt panels on the doors. They keep my fridge going 24 seven. In here, I've got my 12 volt panel um, with my alternators, my charger, battery monitors, my self I go for the phone reception. Everything's in here. All my recovery gear, everything's all set up in here. Um, I've got partner's toilet, all set up, ready to go here. That's why it's ready to go, the grill. Um, kick ass shower awning here. That's amazing, I've been absolutely loving that. It's so quick to set up and pack away. Oh, I'll show you on the other side. All right, starting off, I've got the Darchi Eclipse Generation 2 180 degree awning on this side here. Um, soon I'm gonna get the walls that fully enclose this whole area, which would be great in winter time, keep out all the wind. And then in here, we've got a camp table, which fits nicely in the back of the canopy there. Um, we cook all our meals and everything on here. I've got permanent lights set up here, which activate through a switch in the canopy. Uh, they've both got orange covers on them as well, so in summertime, we put the orange covers on, keep the bugs away in winter, pull them off, and you get your full bright white light. Now, in the canopy, starting off, I've got a 1200 watt kick-ass pure sine wave inverter, so that means we can charge the laptops or anything we want down the river, um, drill batteries, complete anything, so we're not limited by anything. I've got two 170 amp hour deep cycle batteries, so that's 340 amp hours total. So we never ever run out of power, and that's to go along with our two 100 watt solar panels on the doors, as well as we've got a 300 watt kick ass solar panel we roll out. So 500 watts, we're never going to run out of power. Uh, we can go anywhere we want for as long as we want, which is fantastic. Um, I'm running the King's 60 litre fridge with the Clearview Easy Slide drop down fridge slide. Um, it's got the built in table here as well. So this stays down all day, which is really good. Access at any time. And then we've got Adventure King's full length drawer here, which is fully decked out in clear bags. So we can easily access everything through there. We've got our first aid kit, snake bot kit, everything. So we're fully set up there. And then up the top, we're running the Adventure King's rooftop tent. We've had it about two years now. We've had a couple of straps in that break, but that's mostly through our own fault. Overall for the price, it's been really good value. So, you can't go wrong with that tent. Right here guys, so this is just a little bit of a demonstration of what it looks like inside the camper trailer. So, big bonus is that nice comfy bed. It's a beautiful bed and forked out an extra couple hundred bucks for an inner spring mattress. So, I'm going to have guaranteed to have a good sleep every night. You also got a saloon style table here. But, I just keep it light for the kids to sleep on because I prefer to eat outside and spend my time outside so this is basically just sleeping quarters. That's about it guys, there's nothing overly spectacular about it besides that bed. I say there's a TV and stereo but I only use that when I'm busy and trying to keep the kids preoccupied. The rest of the time they just stay outside. Another thing I forgot to mention yesterday it does have a 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter so um, I can charge all my camera gear it also has USB ports everywhere so that's always a bit of a bonus when you need to charge everything up your mobile phones your camera gear your drones everything like that it's it's great for that alright guys so as I said I was going to do a bit of a tour on the outside as well there's the 60 litre dual fridge freezer it's not a bad little unit Good, good insulation. Here's all the pantry, so you've got plenty of room to put pots and pans in. And also, we'll get done. Plenty of room to put the tucker in. They go out a fair way, so you can put a fair bit of food in there. Here's the kitchen. Good little stove. Well, when it works, it's good anyway. Drawers. So there's plenty of room to put stuff in. It's an ideal unit for long stays 
I don't particularly recommend this particular brand. It's a cheap Chinese knockoff and it falls apart and the aftermarket service isn't that great. But if you're looking at a camper trailer, look for an Aussie built and bought one. So yesterday I went through all the pros of having a camper trailer and why I thought it was a good idea. Today I'm going to go through all the cons and why it might not be the great setup for you. Firstly, it's heavy. This thing is 1700 kilos loaded. You definitely know you're towing it and you're definitely restricted as to where you can go and what full driving you can do with it or behind your vehicle. You can't do places like the Simpsons or any heavy sandy country because it's just a massive big sand anchor. You can't do massive washouts. Uh, despite what those guys on four-wheel drive action say, I, I wouldn't recommend it because they cost you a lot of money and you're going to end up messing it up. So with that increased weight and drag comes increased fuel consumption. So towing mine, I lose about 150 k's per tank. And that's a pretty big deal, especially when you're doing remote traveling and touring and you're paying upwards of $2 a litre. You can definitely feel that in your hip pocket. So another obvious one is the cost of it, so the camper trailers are expensive and not only to buy but to upkeep, maintain, registration, insurance, it all costs a lot of money and if you're not using them regularly I definitely wouldn't recommend getting one because they are friggin expensive. Another, another thing is space, so you can't just duck into a tight little nook and set your camp up you need a place where you can turn around you need a place where you can set the vehicle up so with my car and my trailer you know I'm, I'm pushing 12 meters in length so you know there's a massive big consideration there guys Paul and I had a bet going just to see who could set up quicker and the loser would buy beers next time we meet up so Paul owe you a beer mate well and truly kick my ass. I have a swim, go for a swim. Thanks for joining me on the video today, Wayne. It's been really helpful. I hope it's given everyone a bit of an insight to both types of setups um, and what they want to do in the future. But if you have got any other questions, don't hesitate, leave a comment. I'm sure either me or Wayne will respond to you. Um, if you've liked the video, leave a like and you haven't already made them subscribe. But thanks for watching the video, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.